Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. It is a sunny morning, and I'm running a little bit late, but everything's going to be okay. So today, Henrik writes in, asking, why is Serenity 32-bit and not 64-bit? And uh, why am I writing a new kernel instead of using Linux or some other existing Unix kernel? And will it one day be possible to run the Serenity desktop on a regular Linux install? So thank you, Henrik, for these questions. They're good questions. Um, and um, I guess, why is it 32-bit? Well, it's because my other pet project, uh, since I was 18 years old, is a x86 PC emulator. So <laughs> I'm intimately familiar with 32-bit uh, PC architecture. So it was just logical for me when I started building an operating system. Then I would just use x86 um, because I knew it so well. So I was able to just sketch out all the early stuff without spending too much time looking at documentation or anything like that. Uh, and I was also able to test it on my own emulator, which made it very, very uh, easy to debug because <clears throat> I knew everything inside and out. Uh, so it just grew out of that. But I don't have anything against 64-bit. Uh, and I'm going to do a 64-bit port eventually. But it's not really something that is important to me at the moment because uh, there's really nothing that depends on 64-bit that I want to do. Like, everything that I want to do at the moment, I can do on 32-bit. So, um, I'm just pushing it forward to a later time when there's less things to do overall. Um, and uh, that's actually something that's really nice about having uh, good abstractions and, and tried and, and tested abstractions in place. Like, um, instead of instead of trying to build like a completely custom kernel, um, I'm building something that's Unix-like, that has a Unix-like ABI, Unix-like abstractions, uh, and that allows me to um, to keep iterating on higher levels of abstraction because I know that the base uh, makes sense, and it's just a cognitive load off that I don't have to. Uh, constantly worry about the base abstraction, if that makes sense. So that's really nice. But uh, eventually I'll, I'll get around to doing a 64-bit port, unless someone else beats me to it, which would be cool too. And uh, actually the same thing goes for SMP, like um, multiple processor support. Um, that's also, like, it's a nice to have feature, but it's not necessary for anything that I want to do at the moment. Uh, so I just keep pushing it forward, but we'll do that too someday. We'll get there. Um, but yeah. So then the question was, why a custom kernel and not Linux or some existing Unix? And first off, because it's fun, it's fun to do a complete system uh, from top to bottom. And because it's a great learning experience, because I've never worked on a kernel before or built an operating system, so it's, it's just great, great learning experience and figuring out from kind of first principles how everything should fit together. It's um, super interesting. Uh, but um, then when it comes to less selfish reasons, I guess, um, I, during my time at Apple, I saw just what is possible when you uh, build the whole software stack under one roof. Uh, and um, being familiar with that now, I really don't want to build software in any other way because the amount of vertical integration that you can achieve if you control the whole stack is just crazy. And it's something that, um, that Linux will basically never have because you're never going to get kernel developers and desktop developers to move together in, um, in the same code base, in the same repository, with the same uh, people um, bouncing between the different subdirectories and whatnot. Like, the, you, you, can just, you can build something so much tighter and so much nicer if you do that. And I understand that it doesn't make sense 
if you're a specialized kernel developer in Linux to go and work on the GNOME desktop or whatever. But um, here, I'm trying something different. I'm building the system like this from the ground up and trying to encourage everyone who contributes to go everywhere. Like, don't just go in the GUI, go in the kernel. Don't just go in the kernel, go in the C library. Like, go everywhere and, and um, mess around. Because the, the kind of well-roundedness that you can build as a developer by working on all these different components <clears throat> and uh, learning how to make them fit together, that's, that's some really high tier um, developer skill that you can, you can attain there, I think. And it's worth uh, spending some time on that. Because, uh, you know, very often we learn by doing these specialized tasks, and I think it's really, really awesome if you can learn from doing some uh, coordinated tasks that, that involve many large components like uh, an operating system. Anyways, that's uh, that's really the thing. Like vertical integration, I think it's so cool. Like, I I love, I just love uh, Mac OS and iOS for the vertical integration. Like the way that, um, I mean, I just <laughs> use examples of things that I've worked on myself and that I am intimately familiar with. But I know that that there are examples throughout the system, and just the stuff that Safari does to uh, reduce power usage where uh, it's talking to the Windows server and to the kernel in, in uh, Mac OS and iOS about how, uh, which parts of the web page are updating and which parts are static and, and like, um, and like uh, it's, it tells the system that like, well, if, if this area of my window is covered, then you don't have to bother updating it and you can throttle timers and, and uh, um, it will be okay to switch the, to a different GPU and and all these kind of things that that you can achieve if you control the whole stack and it's just really really hard if you don't to coordinate this between um, a user application that has like all of the contextual awareness um, of what it's doing and a kernel that really doesn't but can control all the hardware and basically is gatekeeping all of those benefits until the user application communicates what's going on. Um, so I'm trying to build Serenity. Um, I mean, it doesn't have those kinds of vertical integrations right now, but it's something that I'm acutely aware of the benefit of, and I'm, I'm like making sure that uh, this type of thing is possible going forward by keeping everything in one repository and making everything move and, and shake together. Anyways, um, that's, I guess that's like one of the few things where I'm looking forward with Serenity and not just looking at what's right in front of me. Uh, I know that like going forward to make a really good system, it is important to uh, have really good integration between user space and um, hardware and let the kernel act as a sort of declarative gateway for that information. Anyways, the final question was, will it one day be possible to run Serenity, uh, the desktop Serenity, um, on a regular Linux install? So like, will there be a port of libgui and the apps to Linux, I guess? And the answer is, I don't know. If, you, if someone makes one, there will be one. Uh, it's not something that I personally care about, but if someone wanted to, they could go and port libgui to, um, to speak x11 instead of speaking Serenity Windows Server. And it wouldn't be terribly difficult, I think, because libgui is mostly POSIX. Um, the applications are libgui and POSIX, basically. And um, the one major thing that is different, uh, other than the windowing protocol, is the way that shared memory works. So it's using custom Serenity APIs for sharing bitmaps between the Windows server and the, um, and the GUI clients. But that's something that you could, you could do with, um, 
don't know, whatever uh, appropriate bitmap sharing solution for the target that you're trying to port to. So I think if someone really wanted to do this, they could get it done in, in less than a week. But yeah, it's, it's not something that I care about because I, I, I'm just trying to build Serenity. Um, and I just want to get it to a point where I can switch over and get away from these other systems. And I don't know when that point will come. Like, that's something that's a bit interesting to me. Like, because I've decided to wait until it feels right, until it feels like now's the time to switch. And I don't know when that time's going to come. I don't have some criteria that I'm looking for. It's just a gut feeling. And maybe a lot of people would have switched already or tried to switch already. but. I'm going to do it when it feels right. Uh, so we'll see when we get there. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to keep working on it and uh, working on the thing that seems the most sensible to improve at the moment. Sometimes it might seem like I'm doing things that don't seem sensible, but somewhere in my brain there's a cell that says, this is the sensible thing to do right now. <laughs> I just keep listening to those. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see how long it takes, and we'll see if someone does a port to Linux. Maybe one day I'll wake up and say, seems really sensible to do a port to Linux. But um, I don't know. But thank you for sending in these questions. They're, they're good questions, interesting to talk about. And uh, if anyone else has questions, then, then please leave them below, and I'll get back to you. If, um, if I don't forget. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, other than that, I'm just going to say thanks for hanging out with me on the commute, and have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.